Because when we decided to be a sister, that we gave our Amen. life totally to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the one who took that um, everything, all of what we could desire. Yeah. So your life is not empty. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. no, no, not at all. Like, and he was talking at home about baby Jesus, and mommy came and asked us, sister, who is that baby Jesus? Because my child is talking about him lots at home. Uh, so I'm excited. Uh, today we're here with Sister Isabella and Sister Teresa. And you're with which congregation? We are, uh, the congregation is Sister Servants of Mary Immaculate, originally from Poland, but we live in Canada for many, many years. Are you both from Poland? I'm from Brazil. From Brazil? Yes. Wow. Uh, Okay, thank you for welcoming us into your home. We are here because of Jesus, not because of us. God created us and leave us in this cosmos for a purpose. And uh, we are different and we serve God different way. And uh, we thought it would be interesting to meet you as uh, nuns, and uh, that is not something we see usually today. And uh, we want to know your story because we know that you're here to serve God. And uh, we know that you do many things in this community in Canada. We want to know who you are, where are you from, what is your journey, and uh, how you live this life as a woman. I also would like to add that we are here because of a connection that we have because of what you've already done for Chantal and her own family because from what I understand you're instrumental in helping her at a time in her life when she was very much alone with a newborn child mm -hmm. so thank you for that I, I think we'll start with you Isabella if you could uh, give us some background tell us who you are I was um, born and raised in Brazil. Um, I was raised in a Catholic family. So as I remember, as young as could be, <laughs> so we always like, uh, we prayed at home as a family. Uh, we prayed uh, in the neighborhood. Um, it was the times like um, we do, didn't have a TV or um, basically just a small radio so whenever we wanted to go to church we had to walk quite a while uh, walking or horseback riding that was the main uh, transportation and I was in Brazil until uh, 26 when I joined uh, religious life and did you come to Canada at that time I came to Canada, I was 29, mm -hmm. uh, was three years after when I joined the religious life. Mm -hmm. And I've been in Canada since 1995. Oh, wow. Yeah, how you choose that? Did you receive a call? Did someone tell you? How that happened that uh, you decide to be a nun? Um, Actually, I remember at a very early age, but my mom said that uh, since I was very little, I used to play like uh, with my friends, being a nun. Oh. I would put a <laughs> material over my head and I would play uh, as a nun. And then uh, that stayed with me until, uh, I don't know, I was uh, 14 something like that mm -hmm. then it uh, went away for a while mm -hmm. i lost the interest or i pretended i lost the interest yeah, yeah. then uh, after my 22nd 23rd birthday 
I started to think again about it, but for a while I was trying to ignore it until I visited the convent one day. Um, and I really like they were uh, working with children, uh, with elderly mm -hmm. uh, ladies, and that kind of really touched me because somehow I had that thought in my mind. I didn't want, I didn't know how to put it together, what I really wanted to do. But when I saw they were working with the children and with the elderly, I said, "Oh, I think I, I'm going to be happy with this kind of work." Mm -hmm. And then I started to think about it, and I decided. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was there was there anyone in particular that, uh, that you remember uh, kind of took you in under your wing or under their wing or? The sister, you to that the sister who explained to me about their uh, work, their mission, mm -hmm. she really kind of articulated it in a way that. It, I really kind of, um, she really got me. Mm -hmm. She bought me like, uh, I said, yes, I think that's what I really want to do. Because she had a passion, she had enthusiasm, like when she was talking to me yeah. about yeah. The, the work. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, to try it for myself. Okay. And, uh, and now you've been a nun for a number of years here. How do you uh, like it? Yeah, I still am passionate with the, especially with the work with the young children. Mm -hmm. I work with the group now uh, the last three years, the three to four years, four and a half. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, they are my passion. Mm -hmm. I, I look forward to be with them every day because, yeah, it's really hard when if you are not feeling well that you are asked not to go <laughs> to the daycare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, it's a big, it's a big sacrifice when I need to to be away from them. So you're working in a daycare then? Yes. Yeah, and the, the children are three and a half, four years old. You said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I have uh, ten of them in my little group. Nice. And yeah. you know them all by name? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. See, I love it. <laughs> Backward <laughs> in word. <laughs> so let me yeah. ask you: Do you leave the nine to chase the one? Ah, uh, oh yes, because you <laughs> Just cannot like lose sight of them. <laughs> I oh. cannot lose sight of them. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's it's amazing. Like um, with simple things, uh, sometimes you are absent for an appointment or something. And when you come back and you hear how they missed you as well, mm -hmm. it really um, makes me stop and think, like, what else can I do for them? Because for that little bit, if they missed, um, it means a lot for them as well, yeah? Not for my own self, but for them as well. I love it. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Sister Teresa, you want to share us with us uh, a little bit about yourself, where you came sure. from and how you came to be mm -hmm. a nun and how you came to know Jesus? And sure. I was born in Poland mm -hmm. and raised uh, in Catholic family, but in Poland was uh, was religious freedom, let's say, but was under communism when I was growing up, so we didn't have, for example, crosses in schools in, on the walls. But the fam many families were very Catholic. We were free to go to the church. So from my childhood, I liked to pray, to sing in the church. And there were sisters, nuns in my parish. So from my early childhood, I saw sisters. And always something was catching me, what, what they are, who they are. And they were different outfit and I was very curious and I was going to some uh, little church choir mm -hmm. run by sister so then I g got to know better the sisters I visited them in their convent and uh, was not close to not far from my house so I was in touch with them and I was going to schools always attending religious classes and uh, like to pray and in my house we prayed especially in my grandma. She taught me how to pray and taught about Jesus. And also my parents, my parents were good witnesses to me. 
And then when I was in high school, I like more personally met Jesus. It was like through adoration and uh, singing. In my parish was, uh, was on every Thursday was adoration with Blessed Sacrament exposed and organists were, were playing and we sang songs. And by that spirit, I felt very loved and, and I met Jesus. I don't know how to describe that. And from that time, I was um, desiring to be in quiet, to talk to Jesus. And I was many times after school, I went to the church, was open, was quiet, a little bit dark, because in Poland we have like churches built from uh, rocks like they are very mm -hmm. like <laughs> high buildings and and very something spiritual you you you'd feel when you enter mm -hmm. so i like to spend some time yeah. in complete quiet in the church someone sometimes was one person two persons praying praying there and i was growing with that and then i uh, get to know our congregation because there is many congregations of religious sisters like nuns mm -hmm. established by different people who wants to serve God. So I got to know the sister servants of Mary Immaculate and I liked them when I first time visited them. It was close to my town, not far. Mm -hmm. I went for some gathering of girls, was maybe 100 girls at that time. So I love it, the welcoming, the joy they had and Wow, I felt so good, so welcome, and I said, maybe this is my place. Mm -hmm. And I pray about it lots. And slowly, slowly, I decided that after high school, I will join, join the sisters. Mm -hmm. So I did so. And uh, I was maybe first in my family, like there were some older cousins of my grandma that were nuns, but I didn't know, know them. And then I entered and my family was was happy. First they cried, of course, because I am not going to get married. I am going no God nowhere. But uh, I was close, <laughs> close to my house for many years until I went to Canada. When I was after last vows, because we take vows of chastity, poverty and obedience, three mm -hmm. vows. Mm -hmm. And by that we dedicate our whole life to God, to serve God. So we don't get married, we don't have many possessions, like what we need for life. And we have superior. We need to be obedient to superior. Of course, we talk together, discuss, but she makes main decisions and mm -hmm. we, we are like, it's coordination together. We, we serve the Lord and she's responsible in each house, religious house, there is superior. So I was asked one day if I want to go to Canada because I was working with children and here in Edmonton, we have daycare run by our congregation. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, let's try. It's very far from Poland, but I was happy to come. And I came to Canada in 1996, mm -hmm. and I am very happy here. All these years working with young children in the daycare. Wow, 27 years now. Yes, yeah. yes. Great. I went to Poland back and forth, but most years I was here, yes. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I got a couple of questions for you. Sure. Uh, I want to know more about admiration. I want to know what it was like to grow up in a, in a communist country mm -hmm. and, uh, and yet still have religious freedoms because, mm -hmm. you know, they like to tell us how the commun communists take away all your religious freedoms. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, that you still have that. And, um, and then I really want to know about uh, how old, I know that you're in high school. Um, what what really attracted you to the Lord? So feel free to answer those in any way you mm -hmm. want. So uh, what I said before, like about adoration, attract me to God, I would say the silence and the gentle music by that spirit. I, I think I heard God's voice inside of me calling me to be close to him. Because I always, I learned the faith, I went for First Communion, for sacraments, and I was close to God, but it was like everybody were going to church, praying, but personal, personally, I met Jesus first through that adoration. And then by that quiet time and singing, I realized that he's on the altar because we Catholics, we believe 
that our faith that Jesus is present in the bread, Eucharistic communion, mm -hmm. and sometimes we, we have exposition of Holy Host. It looks like white bread, and we pray, we kneel before Jesus, and then I felt that He is real person, present. And in Eucharist, He is present, and we can, uh, when we go to Mass, we can take Jesus to our hearts by consuming the bread that is his body. Mm -hmm. And I felt that he is real person for me. He is my savior and I want to be all my life close to him. I was drawn to that. And then by contact with sisters, with priests, going to classes, I realized that I am learning about him. I read Bible, of course. I I was taught how to meet Jesus in Holy Bible and in sacraments like Eucharist. And I said, one day, I remember this day, I was walking by the church and I said, my life needs to be close to church, all my life. And then I was going to sisters more often and I decided to be one of them and I am happy. Even though there are some struggles, like in each married life, single life, some sufferings, but I am really happy. and. The second thing is that I was also, uh, always I like little children and I was asked to work with little children in my congregation because our congregation has many daycares. Although we also help uh, sick people, poor people, but our main apostolic uh, work is to run the daycares and teach little children about Jesus in simple way because they are little to pray with them to go to the church sometimes with them and I love that and <laughs> for this day after many many years I still want to do that until I I, I could yeah have you ever had um, somebody that you've had in a daycare um, years ago come back to you for a visit or mention to you how you impacted their lives. Yes, sometimes yes. Few times yeah. that happens and they have good memories that I am really happy with that. And we as a community of sisters, we hear often, oh, I was in your daycare, it was so nice. They remember different things. Sometimes they remember food <laughs> and they, <laughs> they are happy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. this year, but we have had um, the parents that bring their children Back. back, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. They were yes. in our daycare yeah. as a child, oh, yeah, and now they have the, their children, and mm -hmm. they make sure to bring it twice. Oh, even this month it yeah. happened in my group that we got new girl. Her yeah. mommy was when I came to Canada. Her mommy was in our daycare, and now we got <laughs> yeah. this little child. And yeah. also Chantal's daughter was in our daycare mm -hmm. because and we, we still connected. exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. We help Chantel, Chantel help us because it's like spiritual, you know, connection and you is beautiful. Excuse you, me? You were at our wedding. Yes, my wedding, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. I enjoy so much, yeah, yeah, okay. that was beautiful. Sister, your journey as nun is not ordinary things people do. And uh, sometimes people who look at you ask themselves, those people, they... Uh, human being like us, they don't feel the need to have their own children. They don't feel the need to have a boyfriend, life like that. So what can you tell those people who ask those questions? We usually tell them like, uh, because when we decided to be a sister that we gave our Commitment. life totally to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the one who took that um, Everything, all of what we could desire. And what we tried. Yes. Yeah. Um, because he is our husband, mm -hmm. he is our God, he is our love, he is our everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all those uh, extra desires we try, uh, he's the one that is fulfilling it. Yeah. And then we fill out the, the rest of there that some people may think is uh, empty with the prayer life and with the community life. Mm -hmm. So your life is not empty? 
Yeah. Not, not at no. all. <laughs> not at all. Mm-hmm. Like, um, mm-hmm. because we start our day like uh, quite yes, early. Yes, that is uh, one question I want to know. Yes. How you spend your day? Yeah, we usually like Monday to Friday. Uh, we start at uh, ten to six with the prayers. Mm-hmm. We have a chapel here. Yeah, in our we have a chapel in our house. house. Mm-hmm. So uh, ten to six, we are all there mm-hmm. to start in as a community. So five fifty. Five yes, in the morning. Yes. In the morning. Not from ten until six, but no. ten to six in the yes. morning. Yeah. Wow. Ten to six in the morning we start with in the name of the Father. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> and then uh, by eight o'clock we are all at work. Mm-hmm. But from ten to six until eight we are mainly uh, in prayer. Just each day, someone take a turn to we start working to open the daycare. Mm-hmm. So we pray, we have the breakfast, and mainly is in silence until eight o'clock, mm-hmm. with prayer and silence. We are in a community mm-hmm. and in silence. I love it. Yes. You know, God tells us that. Uh, um, we are in the world, but not we're not of the world. Yes. Exactly. And so that reminds me of that. Now, yeah. I, I want to ask you, what do you pray about in the morning? Uh, we have the book, the Liturgy of the Hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we started with that, and then we have a half an hour uh, meditation that we take um, a passage from the Bible. Mm-hmm. That's individual time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we are all in the chapel, so we have a half an hour for personal uh, silence prayer with whatever passage mm-hmm. we would mm-hmm. like to have it. I love it. You yeah. know, in today's society, so few of us, even confessing Christians, don't have that quiet time. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I know myself, I yeah, can I'm, testify. I'm, I'm. That, yes, that's uh, true. I. I should repent from this because I would rather spend that half hour in bed trying to go back to sleep than to get up and spend that first half hour with the Lord. And so I commend you with that because I really do. I know, in, again, in my own life, when I do that, everything goes better. Mm-hmm. Everything. It makes That's me so. a stronger person. Mm-hmm. How's that saying? I'm strongest when I'm on my knees. Yeah. That's so, true. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's difficult because some mornings you wanna sleep longer, but right. yeah. somehow you are happy to get up and go to the chapel and right. pray, and then the day goes smoothly. Even though we have different situations, yeah. Because then we go to daycare work, usually eight hours per mm-hmm. day in the daycare, mm-hmm. and yeah. some after we finish 5.15, we close the daycare, then we go right away for Vesper prayers. Mm-hmm. It is also like um, from the, our prayer book. Mm-hmm. So the last sister who is closing the daycare, sometimes she's a little bit late, mm-hmm. but we as a community start to pray. Mm-hmm. Then we go for supper, like we call it like dinner, but we have more simple suppers because our main, main meal is uh, lunch time. It's mm-hmm. like m- more than lunch, like height of dinner and then so we eat this evening meal and then at 7 p.m. we have masses in our church so every day we attend mass in our we we are working also helping oblate fathers who run this holy rosary parish Mm -hmm. it's very close to our house next to us so we go there for masses but we run the daycare as a congregation just we are helping fathers in the parish also to prepare children for sacraments first communion and uh, taking care of linen, like this altar uh, garment, how you would say that, mm-hmm. cleaning a little bit, making flowers. One sister is doing beautiful decoration in our church mm-hmm. with flowers. And uh, we have our little church, I, as mentioned before, the chapel in our house. Mm-hmm. This is our like kind of little church, so we have Jesus present in Holy Eucharist. Mm-hmm. So this is the main place in our house. Mm-hmm. We can always go there, say a few words to Jesus, go back to work, work and yeah. yeah, that's our life. Yeah, we see the prayer take uh, so much uh, uh, time in your life and uh, you love it. I want to know, beside the prayer and uh, the Mass, is there any time else uh, as a group you sit to open the Bible 
try to understand what wisdom behind what you're reading? Do, do you do that also like a Bible study? We do mm -hmm. once a month. Okay. Uh, we gather as a community mm -hmm. and um, to break God's word. Um, yeah, to... Okay. Like we are we, sharing. We reflect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we share what it uh, meant to us. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is four things I took away from uh, what you said. Prayer life, life of mm -hmm. service, community life and the teaching. I want to know about the teaching. Do you teach children about God? Uh, yeah, yes. Too. Yeah, we, uh, every day, like, uh, we have the moments, uh, we pray with them, like, before meals, mm -hmm. regarding they are Catholics or Christians or not Catholic at all. Mm -hmm. But the parents, when they enroll them to the daycare, they know. They know, yes. Mm -hmm. About mm -hmm. our beliefs. Belief. Mm -hmm. And that we are doing that. So we pray before meals with the children. Mm -hmm. And on a special occasion days, uh, we bring them to the chapel. Mm -hmm. There we sing some songs with them. We talk to them about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't even wait for a special occasion. We go even more often with them. It depends how the the week is going. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, but most of the groups, I believe, mm -hmm. we are going like yes. once a week. We bring them to the chapel. Did you have a have a children who are not a Christian? Yes. Okay. Like yeah. are they believe like Muslim? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. really? Oh, few yeah. few kids. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, they accept you to yes, talk about they, our God. They accept. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only uh, issues we had so far was with the diet. Okay. But mm -hmm. uh, not about the restriction to bring <coughs> them to the chapel. That's well, beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's really beautiful. I. You know, I have some some standard questions that I like to ask some people on that. First of all, do you have a, a quote or a verse in the Bible that you is know. on your heart um, now or is a uh, mainstay in your heart that you've had for years? I really, I'm in awe with that uh, Isaiah 42 when I, Jesus said like, it was uh, is from the Old Testament, mm -hmm. but I believe this Jesus the ones I have carved you in the palm of my hands. So I hold to that. Even sometimes my day it seemed that just crumbled, <laughs> everything kind of crumbling down. Mm -hmm. But when I go in the evening to the chapel, I know that uh, I'm carved in Jesus' hands. So. It, no matter what happened, mm -hmm. he he will take care of it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And for me, is the uh, fragment that Jesus is saying, "Come to me, who is burdened and uh, carrying heavy yoke, and I will give you rest." And I am uh, humble and of my heart. Sorry, because I know better in Polish this passage. Mm -hmm. But this uh, is always like my hope is in Jesus. Always he is asking me to come to him. He will help me. And uh, that he said that uh, the kingdom of God is like you need to be like a child, little child in your uh, spiritual life. Because my patron from Baptist is, is St. Therese from Lisieux. So I love her way and I try to and it's always my heart that Jesus is always helping me and never forgets me. Because I have a yes. good friend of mine, Larry. He reminds me of that very often. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you. Thank okay. you. This, uh, today is not like uh, 40 years ago or 50 years ago when I was young. Today, especially in North America. In Africa, we see young people wanting to be nuns. In Europe, in Asia, but in North America, no much. And there is even though people who don't know what non nuns is because they never met one in their life. We want to know, we know that uh, you choose that life to be a servant of Christ and uh, how you think uh, here in North America you can inspire people 
is that uh, by uh, flyer, by uh, online. Uh, how can you do that today in North America to inspire people to know what is life as a, as a nun? Uh, I would say that, um, of course, there is um, lots of this technology now that you can go through media. But uh, in our case, we don't do that too much because, first of all, we don't have time and we don't focus on that. Mm -hmm. Rather, we give witness to those people with whom we are. And the, the news is spre by being spread because, for example, about daycare, mm -hmm. the families are sharing, friends are sharing, and we have many children, like cousins are coming, friends are coming, mm -hmm. and the circle is bigger and bigger. <laughs> also in the church, when we go to, for example, not only to Polish church, like we go to Canadian churches, the people see us because we are wearing these habits, mm -hmm. we call habits, so the people many times are interested and they ask, oh, you are wearing habit, thank you for that, what does it mean? And we are like, re they can recognize that we are different and we can, when they ask, we talk, even in the stores. Sometimes they, hello sister, or who you are, or many times we don't need to go far away. And I think through that, many people may know religious life. And we go for some gatherings, meetings, like conferences, retreats, so people can see that. Of course, in Poland we have more sisters because our congregation is most of the sisters are in Poland, so they do different ways. They meet young people. Here too, we have, in this parish, we are helping with young uh, group of young people. They went for the World Youth Day to Lisbon last summer, mm -hmm. and one sister is meeting with them and helping them, and the, the news is spread, I think, this way. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And there is a mean, excuse me, oh, okay. is there meaning with the dress? I was going to ask the exact same. Uh -huh. <laughs> tell me more about the habit. Yes, yeah. the habit. We want to know, is that just meaning you renan, or there is another meaning behind that? Uh, maybe I asked Isabella to add, but what I would say, uh, the meaning of the veil that we cover our heads mm -hmm. is that we want to be similar to Mary. Also, this was the uh, way they dressed the women at the time of yeah, Jesus' yeah. dress. Mm -hmm. So Mary were wearing veil, we want to wear also the veil. Mm -hmm. And also it can uh, be symbol of our chastity that we we don't have husband, we uh, dedicate our life to God and we want to be covered and the habit that we are modest and don't follow the fashion and we have simple clothes yeah. to like practical also, practical mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, uh, we simplify yeah, our, mm -hmm. our lives because it doesn't matter where we go, it's always with the is the same outfit, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't distinguish, like for instance, or we go to the park. No, if we go to the park, we go with the um, with the habit. If we climb the mountain, we are uh, with the habit. If we are in the church, we wear the same outfit. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me of uh, how we're to uh, put on the full armor. Of God. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah, it can symbolize. You know, as you go to the park, you go to the park as Isabella and Teresa, but you also go to the park as nuns. So you're always reminding yourself that who you are and never yeah. forgetting who you mm -hmm. are yeah. in Christ. And I think that uh, we as Christians can learn something mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. about that as well. All the time yeah. we are witnesses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because all the time we go, and people see us and notice the difference, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's interesting because even though we never met the person, and the person knows us mm -hmm. because they were um, giving the information, or you just look for the sister who is dressed like this. Because I have incidents that um, in our church, uh, there's the newcomer uh, people, the mm -hmm. immigrants, mm -hmm. and when the service, the mass finish, and then the person is just walking up, oh, are you uh, Sister Isabella? Yes. How, how do you know me? Oh, because a friend of my friend 
is the one who told me that you are going to be here. Mm -hmm. And I want to, to talk to you because usually they are looking for some help, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some uh, first hand help because when they come, they come empty hands, yeah? Mm -hmm. Or with a small suitcase, something yeah. simple. Mm -hmm. And uh, they know that we sisters, uh, we help when we know someone uh, is especially without the food yeah, for the day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they come, we always we have something to give to them. Mm -hmm. So you have side ministries as well then? Yes, right? yes, yes. With, yes. Uh, we do. immigrants and, mm -hmm. and uh, people yeah, in need and so on, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's how yes, you yes. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also we can organize, like ask many people that we know if they have some spare furniture or something, if someone needs, yeah. we collect that and then we uh, contact the person who needs and we may pass it to. It's like going through us to, to help yeah. Yeah. with some, yeah. And uh, every Christmas when you come in front, you're gonna see so much food just to give away. Mm. Yes, yeah. yes. Also, it's like we cooperate with the parish because they gather some food, mm -hmm. then we help to distribute. Yes, yeah. this food. Or sometimes people they just know that we have um, a channel of people that we can help. So some people rather bring kind of a, a big donation in here. Sometimes is with food. Sometimes is with clothing, and because they know we have the where to give. Mm -hmm. So they come and they say, sister, I have. So much, for instance, I got so much fruit this weekend. So here you are, and then they know we have where who to call and uh, where to give. Mm -hmm. Awesome, uh, yeah. awesome. I truly do think it. <laughs> I love it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, do you have Thank any you. other questions? Uh, no, yourself? but if we can uh -huh. pray before to do the tour, if we can. Sure. Do before, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Would one of you like to pray? Yeah, we, maybe okay. we can go and we make a chance. Sure, yeah. yes. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity of sharing your word, mm -hmm. your love, and uh, who we are as a witness of your love. We celebrate uh, Angel's Day. Because we believe like Halloween is not a Christian uh, celebration, especially for young children. Mm -hmm. So we promote uh, Angel's Day. And mm -hmm. the children, they can come in their friendly costume. Mm -hmm. uh, if they have something like white or blue color to dress up. And then we have a, a friendly day with them. Yes, we do have iPad in the classrooms, but mainly it's just for the for us as a teacher, mm -hmm. and uh, for uh, special songs or um, stories that we don't have a book of, mm -hmm. but not as a hand for children for the children to have hand on, but sometimes we can see the two year old they know how to operate that <laughs> better than us because they just go so quickly and they find um, their favorite channel in there. Mm -hmm. So when we see that um, being kind of off, and normally we, in a friendly way, we discourage the parents. We talk to the parents and explain the non-beneficial um, values of letting the child uh, spend too much screen time. Mm -hmm. We try to discourage them and point out to them um, the things that they can do instead of allowing the child to be with um, just on the screen. Mm -hmm. To read the book, to sing the songs, to go for the walk, um, do something, try to build with a child uh, get the tools for coloring to design at home mm -hmm. instead of just a screen a screen. Mm
sometimes the face is spreading through little children because we have I remember one uh, event when the little child we were talking about baby Jesus it was Chinese maybe child from Asia and he was talking at home about baby Jesus and mommy came and asked us sister who is that baby Jesus because my child is talking about <laughs> him lots at home so we gave her Bible we explained and that was very yeah. happy moment that little child was spreading faith to mommy daddy at home This is our beautiful little space that we have statue of Mary. We mm -hmm. go sometimes and pray.